Hey there, and welcome to another installment of Chat Show Coverage 2024, your favorite Chat Show coverage with your favorite libertarian. I'm joined here by Lev hey. with Agilite. Nice Thanks for having you. me at the booth. Sure. He's going to talk to you guys about some new and exciting things that they're doing here at the show, and we're going to have a lot of fun, so enjoy. Thanks. Hey guys, I'm going to show you right now our Magnetics Battle Belt. So this battle belt is basically the culmination of a long design effort to find the pain points that affect existing battle belts, see what features people are looking for, implement them, fix the pain points, and make a badass belt. So let's start with pain point number one. Pain point number one is alignment. When you put on a double Velcro belt, so you have the Velcro inner belt, Velcro outer belt, what happens is you start at one area over here, you start working your way around with your hands, your hands, your hands, your hands are feeling around with your fingers, and then you're done, all right? What, a couple things can happen here. One thing that can happen is that you're not aligned th this way, right? So your gun used to be right here, now it's right here, now it's right here. This is obviously an issue. You have to take it off, try again. Put it on a couple of times, maybe until you get it right. Another thing is if you just have bad uh, alignment horizontally, right? So this one is now hanging down, and then when I go to get it, it falls down. Or it's above, and then the Velcro is gonna be rubbing my skin. We have a system here that has a patented system with two magnets. These magnets <laughs> allow you to take it, click it right onto your back, and put it on. This means that you now have vertical alignment taken care of, so your holster is always gonna be exactly where you left it, and you have horizontal alignment, so you're not gonna have Velcro overlap or poor adhesion, or bad Velcro overlap. So over here in the front, we have the second part. So this is another pain point. The pain point here is that you have a lack of real estate as you move through the sizes on a belt. So traditionally on a belt, if you have um, webbing going through your buckle, what happens is if you're at the smallest size, you're good, because you just have a little bit of excess strap over here and you have molly all the way around the belt. Once you get to a larger size, you expand it out. On a traditional belt, this will all be bare webbing. So it's no molly, no mounting surface whatsoever. And then your excess strap is gonna be bundled up over here, taking up extra room on the outside. Here, we've solved that by having a uh, laser cut molly curve tongue that fits in through here, gives you some stiffness, um, and it's all molly. So what, however much you have exposed, it's still available. You can molly stuff through it and mount more stuff in the front. No matter what size you are in the size spectrum of each belt size, you're still gonna have full molly around the belt. Uh, another thing over here is stiffness. So what we've done is put this tongue, which goes into a, a, a pocket over here on the inside, and that gives you the same kind of stiffness you look for in a competitive shooting belt. So you have a nice rigid hoop around the front, great platform for shooting. The buckle here is a 15 kilonewton Cobra buckle. The uh, webbing itself is 25 millimeter uh, tubular webbing, one inch tubular webbing, rated to the same strength as the Cobra buckle. Super sturdy. The uh, consumer belt is not gonna be rated to keep the price lower, but there's a rated belt available upon request. Right after alignment, the second biggest pain point was flimsy inner belts, or inner belts that you can't wear as your day-to-day -day belt. They're not a great belt to wear uh, with a handgun, perhaps. They might just not really constitute a belt. They might just be like a very simple Velcro overlap, maybe a small geoke or something, not something you'd really think to wear as your everyday belt. So we decided to beef ours up a bit, give it some cool features, and make it something that you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be hesitant about wearing every single day. Um, over here in the front, we have this elastic piece. What this does is the same thing that our cummerbunds do over here. So all of our cummerbunds, our belts, they all breathe with you a little bit. So when you sit down, it expands, you get up, it uh, retracts again. You put in a holster, it expands a little bit. You breathe out heavily, you eat too much, it's gonna, it's gonna be right there with you. You're not gonna be have to, uh, you're not gonna have to be constantly adjusting your belt throughout the day. If you have maybe a ratcheting belt, it's nice that you can quickly loosen and restrict it. But with the, if you have a little bit of elastic, you just don't even need to do that. Um, another thing you have here through the front, just like on the outer belt, you have that stiffness over here going through. What this does is it gives you a super rigid front platform for putting in your appendix holster and for putting in a pistol magazine. And then you don't have any articulation in the buckle, which means that when you put down weight on it, it's not going to bend in the middle like a, like a leather belt would. Yeah. Um, that helps really with the gear. Your stuff doesn't sag, it helps with printing, and it gives you a really stable platform. Now, it's really nice to have that stiffness in the front. It's not so nice to have that stiffness in the back. If you have uh, um, if you have experience with uh, thicker 
uh, harder like scuba uh, gun welds, like super thick, super scuba thick web. stuff, yeah. or anything that has plastic on the inside. Yeah. So you know that around the back, it kind of doesn't fit in your lower back. It sticks out kind of, yeah. and you kind of feel that pressure at the end of the day on your hips and the back. So we've used a material that's a denser foam. What this does is you can see over here, it kind of it's got a little bit of squish to it, and it's not going to be irritating your hips. And let me show you on my belt that I've been wearing personally for a good few months now. You can see it's taken a little bit of a U shape. Just like how a leather belt kind of conforms eventually to fit your body, this does the same thing because the materials are stretchy enough and compliant enough that they're gonna do that, but they're still sturdy enough that it's gonna be a great gun belt for your everyday wear. That's the battle belt, basically taking some issues, fix them, put in some nice features. That's the product, patented magnet system, nice EDC capable inner belt, a little bit of stretch going on there. Um, good endless molly around the front, uh, management for the excess strap, and it's rateable. Let's talk about the next piece of gear. One second. Before we get to that, yeah. um, what's the pricing on this? So the whole belt is going to be, I believe, 179 180 okay. uh, I've been out of, out of the office for a while. I'm not 100% on the prices, but yeah, it's somewhere around there. That's pretty good considering you're basically getting two belts in one. You're getting an EDC belt yeah. and a battle belt. Sure. Yeah, and like, I, I've been, I, I wear every day the, the inner belt. Uh, I carry appendix. I appendix carry a M and P 2.0 compact. Oh. Uh, sometimes I'll run a pistol mag in the front, also an extra one, or I'll put it in my pocket. Um, and I it just it doesn't. I carry exactly that, but full size. Okay, yeah. I'm not man enough. <laughs> 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 I can do have a TLR 7 on it though, so it adds a little bit oh, extra okay. bulk up there. Um, cool. But yeah, it's a great gun. You have good taste, sir. You have very good taste. Thank you. All right, let's talk about uh, the next piece of gear. All right, here's the IFAC. Have I showed you this yet? Uh, and I checked it out when I was here for the TNA day, but I yeah. haven't seen it. Well, uh, let me show you. Let me jump right into the features. Sure. The IFAC right over here. This is a product designed by Gal. Gal is one of my best designers. His background is he was an instructor in the combat medic school in the IDF, uh, and he's a pretty OCD guy when it comes to details and design. And I'll show you why that's really important for a product that's a medical medical piece of gear. Medical gear, you want it, really want it to be solid. You want it to be dependable, and you want it to be predictable. So let's take a look. Right over here on the top, we have a tourniquet sleeve. When you take out a tourniquet from here, um, you can choose to cinch this down if you want. But if you cinch that down in the back, this stays pretty flat. Still a great place to put uh, stick lights maybe, uh, markers, sharpies. Yeah. You can put a cigar in here, perhaps a hot dog. Whatever you happen sure. to have that you want to store over here. Over here in the front, you have two slots for uh, shears, trauma shears from both directions. And then if you go ahead and open this, you lift this up and pull it out like that from either side. Uh, let, me, let me tell you what the advantage is of Velcro over something like elastic. So the nice thing about Velcro is that no matter how much stuff you have in here, it's gonna perform the same way. You're not gonna have any situation where you have too much gear in here, so your elastic is super, super tight, or you don't have enough gear, and you're kinda sliding around, falling out. It's gonna perform exactly the same. And speaking of OCD, check that out. So the inside over here, super organized, very, uh, very well thought out. You have four individual compartments. You have a sleeve over here in the middle. Right now there's like a, a Sharpie in there, but that's a great place to put a chest decompression needle. And what's nice about this is if I take one thing out over here, everything else is gonna stay where it's supposed to be. Nothing's gonna be flying all over the place. It's very compact, super modular, uh, great little eye pack. The attachment methods on the back are molly. Uh, with half molly increments, you can attach it to any battle belt. There is a pass-through sleeve if you're putting it on a belt that doesn't have molly. Um, and we're gonna make a dangler that's a molly-based dangler that you can attach this to to put it in your front or back or your plate carrier in the Velcro. That's cool. Yeah. All right, let's talk placards. So what we've done with our pincer placard this year is that we've updated it to work also with 7.62x39, also with 5.45 and also with pistol and uh, PCC oh, magazines. Oh, that's sweet. Super versatile. Now you can have just one placard and it's gonna basically do everything for you. Uh, there's a lot of units that we work with in the IDF, special forces units that for certain maritime operations prefer AK platforms, whether it's uh, actual AKs or whether it's a Galil or something like that. Um, this works great with Galil mags, by the way. Uh, it's protected on the inside against these sharp edges yeah. of these nubs and the opening is protected and a little bit widened so you can actually re-index really easily 8k mags yes. which is isn't something that's hard to in, find yeah. yeah there aren't a lot of magazine uh, pouches that do that and it's protected and we've tested it in the office with our uh, testing machine <laughs> up to like um 50 60 000 insertions i think 
And you know, it'll start to fray, obviously, because this thing is just a, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. But it's gonna hold. And you can't really put um, AK mag into another elastic pouch and expect it to uh, survive that. So it still works great. 5.56 five, works really well, actually. P mags, stand mags, uh, protected. You can use it forever. Um, the, ed the opening now is even bigger, so it's even easier to uh, re-index without looking at it. And let's talk about this. Let's talk about this uh, pistol, magazine, PCC, whatever, insert. If you put it right here in the middle like this, just drops in with Velcro, by the way. You put it right in the middle, you can fit two Glock mags. That's, so if that's you're running a pistol caliber carbine, maybe like a kel Sub 2K or something like that, and you have those uh, Glock mags in there, you can put six across here. Yeah, that's six cool. thirty rounds. Yeah, you're running any subgun. Any subgun that has that. becomes a sub subgun. Exactly. Yeah. Now, if you have a subgun with thicker magazines, well, you well you you might not be able to fit two in there, but you can move over the divider and put one in each one. And then basically, you can still train with the same placard you have. Take out your uh, intermediate bat, your intermediate rifle uh, magazines, your five five six, whatever. Um, throw in the insert. Put in your PCC ones or your subgun. Uh, magazines, train with that, and you have the same placard. You don't need to buy a new one. Just swap it out when you're done. And how much is it just for the insert? Probably not that much money. Yeah, uh, it's coming out soon. I think maybe May. Don't uh, don't uh, quote me on that. But yeah, awesome. looking forward to it. It's gonna be super versatile now. And of course, it comes with swift clips and G hooks, height adjustable to work on any plate carrier. Sweet. Yeah. All right. So I guess the big question, the last question that we have is, if you could have any uh, one Air 15, what would it be and why? I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna take my negative light machine gun, commando version, shortened barrel, folding stock, EOTech with a three times magnifier, streamlight light in the front, IR laser on the right, uh, vertical foregrip, and 150 rounds of uh, armor piercing green tip 5.56. Five, Cause that just makes my day and it makes my hard. Well, uh, surprisingly, that's actually the correct answer, so. I won. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having us at the booth. Sure, man. Thanks if for you, coming by. If you guys want to know more, or I should say, if they want to know more about Agilite, where can they yeah. find you guys? Um, well, obviously, our YouTube channel, Instagram, uh, and our website. And if you're ever in Israel, you know, maybe stop by the office, see some cool <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for having us at the sure. booth. Thank you so much for coming, man. Sure. And as you always... You are my favorite libertarian. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, thanks for watching. Stay free. God bless. Keeps you up at night, yeah. Make all the demons quiet, yeah. We were built to thrive, yeah.